Let's get into the chat. I think a good place to start is uh, this whole Mace and P Diddy, Puff Daddy, Woo. Black Excellence Diddy, a Billy Diddy. Love Diddy. Yeah, love. love. Yeah, <laughs> I need love. Hair mask Diddy. Yeah, brother, a lot of Diddy's over there. A lot, a lot of money over there. Um, I think I touched on it loosely last week when we were talking about the Grammys. Yeah. I just kind of referenced his speech and like, I like the speech to a certain degree, but are we in, are we out? And it's like, on in hindsight, it was kind of, it's kind of weird having that speech come from Diddy because... Historically he, of what we know of him. What we know, or what, what we feel that we know is to be true. We don't yeah. know all the facts. Yeah, it's true. But Let the someone like Diddy to me seems like someone that the industry in the building loves. Because mm. you've always brought us the artists, you've managed to get us the hits. And essentially you are on kind of par, if not head and shoulders, a lot of the people that would have been superior to you before because you've got a lot more money than they have. Yeah. So if anything, you you are part of that club. Yeah. Let's part not get it twisted. Like he's re- he's responsible for like a lot of yeah. what the culture has yeah. brought forward. Like especially yeah. like in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot like, of nineties hip hop, mm. um, R and B. What what would you call Terry <coughs> J. Blige's um, genre? R and B. R and B. and soul. R and B soul. No, yeah. I call it R and B, bro. Like yeah. no, there was a, there's actually a term that like, Diddy used to say. I, can't, I don't know if it's R and B soul. What at the time? There was something that he used to say. Yeah. And we obviously falls on. She was the queen of R and B and soul. Take that. Take Hip hop soul, I think that's what you used to call it. There's something it? Did used to call her genre okay. at the time. But like just as that example, you got Total, you've got on twelve, you've got all these all these different branches of Diddy. Obviously, if I even obviously you've got Biggie, mm-hmm. Mace, etc. But I feel I'm like he only has like five real successful branches. Who? Go on, name the five. Diddy. So um Biggie. Biggie. Mace. Yeah. Kim. Was she on the Diddy? I don't think she was actually on. I think she was on the Biggie. Yeah, but it's Junior a problem. He was manager at a certain point, so I, w- I would still attribute that to him because I, I would as well. fools with Biggie. I personally wouldn't. Okay, cool. Let's take it out of this. So hmm. Mace and Biggie. The yeah. Locks. The Locks, one album. One one shiny one. Suits, and they, they kind of went no. super rugged All after right, that. All right, so, so um, Biggie. Yeah. Mace. Yeah. Um, Mary. Mary. You gotta give that to Diddy still. Mary, yeah, Mary. Faith Evans. Mary J. Blige, Faith Evans. I thought Faith was Biggie. 112? 112. I see, I see, yeah. I see 112. Faith Evans, I'm like, hmm. And Lil' Kim, I'm like, hmm. Because they're no. both. What do you mean, hmm? Hmm. Mm. Like they, they were huge, bro. No, I feel, like, but they, I feel like they stem from Biggie. I don't feel like they stem from Diddy, per se. Faith was 100% bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't get them. No, if we don't I, I, get I believe because... you had more conviction than I did. So. <laughs> no, no, you're 100% bad boy. All right. He means it. <laughs> um, I was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like, bro, these are albums bands. I own, isn't it? Like a <laughs> debut album. <laughs> you, I have. Can you hear this idiot, bro? What's that? <laughs> he, said, he said Faith Evans. Can you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> is, is he all right, bro? So, Total, he, he had Total. They went platinum. Their first album went platinum. But where are you getting mm-hmm. these facts from? But he, he, was, checked, he was there, bro. He hasn't checked nothing. He's like 57, bro. Why are you arguing with me, bro? I haven't seen him looking. But when you see me not argue, you know he's right, bro. Don't argue, <laughs> argue. he's correct. He hasn't had one piece of information. His phone's on silent. Platinum, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Come on, yeah. man, it's like if you're a fan, man. If you're a fan of see, like the music Talk or, spicy, or that mm. certain era, <laughs> Craig Mack, people are forgetting. Flavor in your ear. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like um, He had Shine as well before uh, he went in. But what, what did Shine really do before he went in? He went jail. What about he, he, had two, crazy, he, had, he had two hit singles and the album went gold. Do you was prepared for this conversation? No, no. Do you know? Do you know? What? I said. I said. Only say that because I won't take nothing away from these man. But I just feel like. But you, you got to think about Diddy himself as an artist. Mm-hmm. So like when Biggie passed, um, he done excellent. After he had boss. the the No Way Out album. Yeah, mm-hmm. he himself. You know what I'm as saying? An artist like, was he had like, hits. He put himself. it on his back. Mm-hmm. Obviously, with the help. The writers, the hitmen. But then at the same time, that's that is stuff that he cultivated because he would have created course, an environment yeah. to bring that. But even even though within that, yeah, mm. it's like very hard for a label to have like mad artists that can dominate from, um, let's say, 95 all the way up to like, I don't know, 2000, 2001. 
Yeah, it's and difficult. you can argue that all, Every of, year. all of his premier artists, everyone's had a certain element of at least one or two success. Platinum. Like all of them. Was Mario Wynans on under Bad Boys? Mario Wynans was like part of the the production team, okay. whatever. Oh, okay, and then yeah. obviously he came out as an artist a little bit later. Like when I was singing in the bathtub and that? Yeah. yeah with his shirt on. <laughs> yeah. And then when he came out, he took it off. What a neek. Man said, what a neek. Yeah, he had like, you know, like if you remember Carl Thomas, like yeah. R&B, yeah, 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 112, yeah. like he was responsible for their success. And then after he they left him, like, you know. No, it's cause I, just, I just felt like that a lot of, um, I felt like they, they haven't done as, not as much, let me not, let's not say that, but I felt like that a lot of the, so so. I mean, I felt like a lot of his success did ride off Biggie. And I felt like there wasn't, I don't think he's done it. No, that's my point was, I don't think anything's been as big as Biggie since mm. Biggie. Do you know what I mean? On Bad Boy, just in general. I mean, on Bad Boy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, that's a bit difficult. Though. Unless I'm wrong. Yeah, that's a hard thing. That's, to a, do. that's yeah. a legacy that's, act, that's, yeah. and then you got members. You got to factor the, the whole world. beef of East Coast and mm. West Coast. There's so much stuff that was actually bigger than just the work they did in the studio and the time period as well. Mm. Yeah. I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. But I, don't, I, I, I do, I but, do understand but, it, but there's, there's context and stuff around it, which is like almost kind of out of his control. I think maybe Mary's probably the biggest thing that came from. Bad boy after I think Biggie. technically it's actually Mace, even though just the one, like it's actually is part of my Mace, conversation. Mace had um, three albums, I think, under Bad Boy. Yeah, yeah. After after Biggie, I think he's he's his most successful. Oh one. yeah. Um, so you know, I'm but, trying to see if like um, I'm not even sure if like contractually like Mary was with Bad Boy. Mm. I can't I can't confirm that for for true. Um, this this admit this is the moment where King wants you to do research and like, mm. wants you to do no, the oh, I might, I might research. research. Yeah. Um, do, you want to, do you want to play the the speech that he did at the at the Grammys just to kind of round off this bit of the conversation? We're going to why I kind of brought him up. And we'll, yeah, uh, sure. We'll have a good old back and forth. We are passionate, but most of us, this is all we got. This is our only hope. Truth be told, hip hop has never been respected by the Grammys. Black music has never been respected by the Grammys to the point that it should be. So, so right now in this current situation, it is not a revelation. This thing been going on. And it's not just going on in music, it's going on in film, it's going on in sports, it's going on around the world. And for years, we've allowed institutions that have never had our best interests at heart to judge us. And that stops right now. Right. Fair? Mm -hmm. Fair? Fair. Yeah. Fair. What, what did he say? He just, he basically, what's the, what was the, 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 the bar in there is uh, institutions basically that never rated us. We're not going to allow them to judge us. And what's the Jay-Z that he talks about Billboard? Like, growing up, they kind of rated Billboard. Now it's like billboard is you dumb like that mm, don't mean nothing yeah. to man anymore innit? Mm. like we're kind of new rules type of thing innit? it mm. we're people that don't rate <clears> us who've never loved us judge us and put us in these weird sections obviously last week we spoke about Tyler the creator he got his uh, he got his award but it was like this kind of like the nigger award yeah you know? so like the fight was like essentially when they were coming up the fight was to get on these things or to like to seek the validation from um you know entities like billboard mm. or the um, the Grammy Awards, like you know, just to be accepted, but they weren't necessarily really accepted. It's like all our artists over here coming up, they 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 popping in the streets, and then they go Radio One and they tell them to switch their music to get playlisted. That's the only mm. way they're gonna come through the door. Which now it's very different with streaming and the internet being so powerful. But remember that time period, if all of our artists, everyone at some point has had to do a pop song or something that's a little bit left of what you know them for. Um, so Diddy had that speech here. Yeah? And then uh, Mason Betha, Murder Mace, had a nice little response on the, on the Instagrams. And he said, um, Diddy, I heard your Grammy speech about how you are now for the artist and about how the artist must take back control. So I'll be the first to take that initiative. Also, before we ask of other ethnicities to do, do us right, we should do us as black people better, especially the creators. I heard you loud and clear. And when you said that you are now for the artist, and that to my responses, and to that my responses, if you want to see change, you can make a change today by starting with yourself. 
but us. Mm. Your past business practices normally has continued purposely starved your artist and has been extremely unfair to the very same artist that helped you obtain that icon award on the iconic bad boy label. For example, you still got my publishing from 24 years ago in which you gave me $20,000, which makes me never want to work with you as an artist um, and wouldn't, I'll do right here. And you wouldn't want to if you know someone's robbing you and tarnishing your name when you don't want to comply with a horrendous business model. Obviously there's more, but that's the sticking point. And that's the one that kind of blew up on social media when everyone saw like, what, 20 bags. <laughs> what, what is publishing? It's basically the rights to your music, essentially. So, so that was so like if you own your publishing, you can. That's how you get your music on like television for adverts. Oh, so if if, if Mason song right, goes on, right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Mason song goes, it's on. only your intellectual property, basically. How how old was Mace when he signed that? Nineteen. Nineteen. How old was Diddy? Probably. So I think he was like twenty eight. Yeah. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. Yeah. So like you're thinking about um like the. Two people in the scenario, you've got a fully fledged adult and then you've got a young impressionable teenager about mm. to enter something that he's never experienced before, something that he's never seen before. Um, and by that time, Diddy's already su successful. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like he's done, he's done his internship at Uptown and then he's moved on to create his own thing. And what year Biggie. was that by the way? 24 years ago, that's what, 96? Yeah, around that around yeah, that but period. Twenty bags in ninety six ain't the same as twenty bags now. Of course, and but, twenty bags is someone just rhyming out of nowhere from Harlem and that. Yeah, I mean, but I twenty think bags that's, not that, no, but that, that's, that's the disguise in it. That that's, that's the disguise in no, no, it. No, no, I hear that. I'm just, I'm just highlighting it because people are like, ah, how am I gonna do that with twenty bags? But I'm like, yeah, you, you say that, but you have to take time and everything into context. Mm -hmm. You was rapping for free, bro. Someone's yeah. giving you twenty bags, you and also we don't see like now. For, for, I hope for a lot of us in this room, 20 bags ain't like a crazy figure. Like, I was like, no. 20, it's like, it's like, like yeah. I'll take it if you give it to me, but I'm not saying yeah, it. Like, I'm not giving it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. money. I'm like, <laughs> 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 Man, say faith and vans. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, um, you know, regardless of the fact that, you know, 20, 20 grand was um, different yeah. back in, in that time period. Inflation, all them good things there and you're essentially like, you need to know what you're signing. Signing. Mm. So is that element of where we can say Mace is also at fault to a certain degree because you still signed it. No one, no one, no one in inverted commas held a gun to your head. Do you know, do, I would hope, I hope you know what, yeah, like, 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 oh, Do you know no, what, man. yeah? Like no, I never no, really I'm like, I, in these situations, I never like try to choose the harsh stance. <laughs> um, you go for I, the empathetic route. I just try to understand like someone of, you know, the, the, his age and like the access of the man at the time or the kid at the time. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's, <clears throat> you get to live out your dreams essentially. And how many people like, we're, we're only like super informed now. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like an artist oh, so now kind of easy to say can't, like, yeah, yeah, like, because that is the beginning of what we have today. Do you know what I'm saying? In yeah. terms of like the culture, like hip hop is, Hip hop started to see like it's real success during that period. Yeah. So he's like first success, more like first success. Yeah. Do you know? What I'm, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, um, and he's seen what he's probably done with like Biggie Smalls, and he's thinking, oh, rah, like, like he's done. He's managed to so transform like York, Craig Mack. You see Biggie Smalls. Like, you want to sign to Bad Boy. You want to mm -hmm. sign to Bad Boy. I think at the time everyone wanted to sign to Bad Boy. Like, come over to Bad Boy, make your dreams come true. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all glossy over there, isn't it? Mm. Shiny suits. Take that. Take that. Diddy's got him in the studio now, writing madness, bare shit, like doing a lot. Like, not to say that Diddy's direction didn't mould the Bad Boy sound or what it is today, but it's like. What my problem with Diddy is, is that he he disguised everything under the guise of like a family, like brotherhood, whilst he was- Not doing that. Raping, not doing that. Raping, yeah. He was like, raping. it was shady deals, isn't it? Mm. So obviously if like, if you put your business hat on, some people would be like, yeah, well- Business is business. Business is business. But, or like, that's what Diddy was taught to how to move. Mm. Mm. But as time goes on now, like, situation's a little bit fucked up for me. Like, I just feel like, you know, you got to do right by people had, who had a huge hand in your success. Do you know what's weird, yeah? I also say this, I say, as much as I don't fuck with what he done at all, but 
Diddy was also very young mm-hmm. and learning how to be successful. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like at that point, at this point, he's a pioneer, isn't it? So he's looking at it like, all right, cool. And the label's taking a lot of the risk at the time as well. Yeah. So he's thinking a huge risk. They put the money up in it. Mm-hmm. He's making decisions that he thinks I have to make the best decisions right now to ensure myself in this position. Not understanding that 20 years now, you're gonna be this thing, and everyone's gonna still be. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he had the foresight of the situ- things being more how, money, how more they problems. are. He said 10 years from now, you're gonna still but, be but, on top. Just to, <clears> just to kind of combat that though, you can't. You got. You got to be able to deal with both because the positive side of being Diddy, being the, the face of a label, is that more people are probably people are more inclined to sign with you because it's a relatable face from the culture isn't this white man from somewhere else that is not part of us. Mm-hmm. But then what comes with that is, if it's Universal, Columbia, you don't know the face of that or the head of that. And the head of that is someone that just manages the money. That job changes every 12, 12 months. Whereas if Diddy, as long as we've been alive, we know him as bad boy. So you feel mm-hmm. like you can go over there and touch him. You know that's him. Mm-hmm. So when it's good, you can get everyone in. But when it's bad, we can, I can at you on Instagram. You mm-hmm. can't at the, the head of Columbia. Yeah, like, you can, but no, I say, your account will get shut down. Possibly, isn't it? <laughs> and the, the man there, their the Instagram's probably like a thousand followers. They ain't in a club doing crazy mm. like Ciroc mm. boys, Ciroc boys, man. They don't care about that. Whereas if Diddy, he's larger than life. So yeah. that larger than life character has his benefits, but has his drawbacks. Where like when mm-hmm. it goes bad, mm-hmm. I can at you. I can essentially drag you. Yeah. You know? And there's, there's a little bit more. And the thing is, is that like Mace was in, in that whole um, caption, like, Mace basically said that he was with Diddy like a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, let me read the rest of it. He said, um, um, however, so people, people yeah. would always ask, what's up with Mace? Question mark. So I would be forced to still perform to not look crazy when I was getting peanuts and the robbery will continue. Obviously, there was a bad boy tour recently and he was on that. So many great moments and people's lives in music were lost. But again, I rode with you in the face of death Mm-mm. without flinching Mm-mm. and you still wouldn't do right. That was a personal... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. Wrote that I wrote. I wrote. He wrote. That one. There's something in there. Yeah, something it was, was death in like cap locks. No, 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 no. <laughs> that would have been mad. <laughs> I read it like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never said anything because I wanted to wait until I was financially great, so I can ensure that I was addressing this from a pure place and not out of spite. Bars. To be fair, yeah, that's a solid. I, I ain't a broke in it. He thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. He to, about it. to add insult, you keep screaming black excellence and love, but I know love isn't free. So I offered you two million in cash just a few days ago to sell me back my publishing in um in brackets as his biggest artist alive. That always shows you respect for giving me an opportunity at 19 years old. Your response was, if I can match what a European guy offers him, that will be the only way I can get it back. Or else I can wait until I'm 50 years old and it will revert back to me from when I was 19 years old. I did go and check. I think it's Mason's got like another seven years. Mm, so It's like... You bought it for about 20K and I offered you 2 million in cash. This is not black excellence at all. When our own race is enslaving us, if it is about us owning, it can't be about us owning each other. No more hiding behind love. You change. Give the artists back their dollars so they can take care of their families. Do you know what? That's probably one of the best written things I've ever heard of. Fully. That was Instagram. Fully. When you sent it to me earlier today, I was like, Wow, you read in it. I was like, wow. So did, did, wait, did, 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 did <laughs> my reading do it justice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's what what I'm I'm finish it off. Finish it off. All right, so take that, take that, take that. Do you know what I realize what Mace needs to do? What? Throw a chair at him. Throw a fridge at him. Do a. If the locks didn't even the locks, the thing is the locks threatened to throw the fridge on Diddy, and even they didn't do it. Diddy's Stuff a gangster, bro. Charity, Let's bro. talk about that once we get to everything going. Diddy is a, Diddy is a whole gangster. Mm. Fam. <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. When you really... Diddy will make you go away. And he plays both sides. Mm. Shouts out to Shine, 10 years. Mm. Allegations are Shine never busts his gun in the club. I'm not going to say any more on that. The thing is, yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have to understand this, bro. You have to understand it. What Mace... <laughs> Welcome. Mace back. has explained, yeah, fully mm. the situation, what happened, didn't it? That yeah. it's not like a bitter man, it sounds like a man that's trying to be fair, understanding and mm. saying like yeah. just to coincide with the message that you said a, a couple of days ago, I think I'm that, holding you accountable basically. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It just sounds like to me that he exhausted all his options. And that was like the only like after seeing that speech, it was like yeah. okay. You're rubbing it in my face, like, yeah. cool. Well but not even like not even to. necessarily you're rubbing it in my face. You've said that now, so everyone can hear. So now here is my 
rebuttal to that yeah. amazing speech. To his defence, though, in, in that speech, he doesn't really do the black excellence thing like that. I've, mm. We've heard him right, say cool. outside so, of so, that. So, the Rock Nation brunch recently. No, but do we speech. have a problem with the term black excellence? We've got to define it faster than really understand what... I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Because... Yeah. I just to get as black because as I see that okay, I a do. lot of people that I do a few have it that... because it gets used and abused, mm. and I feel like it's hard to judge because I can't say, "Oh, Diddy wasn't doing black since back in the day." Like you should be allowed to evolve and change and grow in it. Mm. I think he but was I doing do, black excellence, but no, but I do he's feel like black. I do no, feel like he was doing Diddy excellence. Yeah, he was. Yeah. It was kind of Diddy like, was larger than life. True. He just happened to be black. <laughs> true, true, true. He was sending niggas to, the, to go and get cheesecake. Like, come on, he was violating them really. Oh, making the band. Yeah, come on, man. Dylan. Yeah, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Well, the point I make is I think it gets used and abused. And I think with Diddy, there is a, a element of like, even like mm, suspicion when now it's, when this more woke era, and it's like, yeah, black excellence, we need to stick together because it's beneficial to your bottom line. Mm. Let's just keep it a buck. Because mm. if we're buying black, you're one of the premier brands in that space with the alcohol and that. Mm. Jay-Z has the lyric, um, why the fuck am I drinking Belvedere? For, I'm paraphrasing here. When Diddy got Ciroc. Mm. It's all beneficial to you as like, Yo, come on, the Black Brother. Mm. But if the Black Brother's getting close to the billion, like, I don't, I'm, I'm borrowing maybe like some massive, crazy humanitarian innovations or something, like maybe your like medicine, whatever. Most people that get to a billion, you fucked up a lot of people. That's my belief. Mm. Do I need to do some more research and make sure that I'm 100% factual? I, I might do that, but that's my genuine belief mm. and my core. For you to get to a billion, some people have had to kind of suffer along the wayside. And maybe it's made this collateral damage within that. Because Hate was saying but that- it's, it's, it's an everyday thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like me being an owner of a company, like I've employed people to like hire and fire, innit? <laughs> me as the person that's been fired, I'm gonna feel fucked up about mm. that particular situation. Yeah. And obviously like within a company that I may work for, mm. you may not know who the, the owner really is. Like he's not in the face of like how these men are because they're entertainers. Mm. So obviously like being the head of a company that they've built, there's gonna be an element of like disgruntled employees along that journey. Am I gonna like, hold every single billionaire accountable f for that i'm I'm not sure in it and it's not even like as a defense to, to gonna, them man, like, I don't, Diddy right now. I'm not even like i don't know these man personally obviously like i admire what they've done like musically what they've given us entertainment wise but yeah. from a moral standpoint like i've also acknowledged that they've done some fucked up things isn't it Fully. which mm. is like i'm not here saying like oh yeah i agree with that because i don't wholeheartedly like i, I side with mace on this like I feel like he should, he should get his just due in it. Obviously, his per, his paperwork weren't right, so like you have to abide by what you've signed for. Unfortunately, in this game, in it, mm -hmm. and to take on someone did like like Diddy, if you want to take it down a legal route, you, the chances are slim. Mm. And I don't think he's gonna get to that. I think the maddest thing, you know, with public like discourse, it sounds really fucked up. I know if that's me, yeah, I may stand up to me publicly. You're waiting them eight years or seven years. <laughs> all nah. I've got to do is bring out it's a new flavour of Ciroc yeah. and you're not going to forget about this not you specifically but like you'll be forgotten I don't even drink Ciroc <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean I might if it's there but I won't buy it yeah we're buying La Solas out yeah, in these streets La Solas, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. but yeah like I just feel like um, obviously like when the, the, the news comes out Everyone's gonna hate on like everyone's or, everyone's, an everyone's expert mad on contracts. At, yeah, and, like, everyone's an expert music on contracts law, straight away. And but that's music dirty, that's dirty though, man. Man can't tell me raw if you can match the Europeans buyer. That's bro. But do you know if he's saying if he's saying he offered him two million cash, yeah? Cash, not 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 yeah, fucking, but, that, but he's saying the what's European that cash app that they use in America, fam. None of that <laughs> <laughs> He said the European Donny is offering him more. Can you match it? I think also there is there a, a bit of this where it's like Let's say Diddy one day wants to maybe sell the whole bad boy catalogue. Mm. That's a crown jewel. It's like, would you sell Life After Death? Like, I'm, I'm gonna you wouldn't. Dead, I'm going to be dead serious. I know a little bit about music and all that kind of shit. Bruv, two mil is not enough for Mace's catalogue, bro. Exactly. It's no not. way. And in the era where man was selling physical CDs. You understand? Something that went like tri triple platinum or something stupid no like that. No way. Harlem World. Me. Harlem World went like four that birthed, times platinum. That birthed everything we've had after that. Yeah. Like everyone loves Diplomat that. We don't get that if you don't have Harlem World. Yeah. We don't get camera on and like we don't have that. I'm not saying they weren't rapping, they weren't doing this thing, but we don't get the Harlem movement after that if we don't have Mace. Because you have to have someone go and shut down and like kick open these doors for else to, everyone else to see that it's possible. 
it's the it's the other albums that didn't do as well. Like but there was also an element as well where like double up. Didi, I've seen I've seen interviews. I'm gonna try and do some research. Diddy sat there and he's talking. He talks about like obviously Mace is having his troubles. Whatever they gave him money for the album, Donny Blue went to the church. He never recorded like the time he gave him money for an album, never recorded it. I think that's where that two minute actually comes from. That's the actual figure that they gave him. Do you remember oh, when when Fifty had there was that little weird thing when Fifty had Mace in the when is it Window Shopper video? Yeah, they were like they were trying to do Murder Mace. They were trying. He was trying to sign Mace. And it never really worked out. Mm. Did he ask for a mad figure then? Because I think the money he spent on Mace, my man obviously blew out the money. He was trying to get the money back in it. Are you gonna get the same Mace though? Well, when when Fifty was trying to sign him, of course not. Uh, <laughs> Goes that same. But big ups to Mace though. He did um, recently. Was it last year? Have a clash with um, Cameron and he washed Cameron. Right. Not, not even a debate. So done. Washed. Remember <laughs> this though. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, oh yeah, man, how you doing? Come on, you good? Come on, I know you like yeah, that. Come back. I know oh, you like that. How long you been back, man? And all the pretty chicks all wanna smile at me These rap cats, man, they all got this out for me And if I ever see them, man, they probably bow to Boot cutting through Harlem <laughs> That's the polo shot of the strap yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah Man, polo's down to your knees in that <laughs> He sounds happy, man He was happy to be back for a little piece Yeah, man know? left the, the pulpit, bro <laughs> I shout out to Matt Mason, Murder Mason, Mason Betha, Pastor Mace. <laughs> uh, yeah, um... Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a mad one. Mm. I hope that Didi does, or they do come to like some sort of agreement. You know what I mean? Like I think it's been like <laughs> it's been known for a while that Didi has fucked over a lot of his artists. Like the locks didn't free the locks free the locks campaign. Total. Like I think mean, even to that interview that Ross longer, Ross like. even like acknowledged it in one of his bars, like um, where he said, "Oh, it's time to rip the game." Like Puffy did total. Like, that's a ridiculous. That's a wild bar. That is a wild He's got bar. Some more rapey bars, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I, let's look at this right now. <laughs> Molly with a champagne, she yeah, even know it. Like, Ross, oh, oh, rape the Russia, game. Rape the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rape, Ross. <laughs> like Puffy did total. Um, Can like we say even that? even oh. like um, there was a time period where like I think um, Diddy was trying to recreate like that era with having Ross because he was managing Ross for a minute mm. um, and he was managing like, I think he tried to manage Nikki at one point Montana. Um, around like the hello, good morning yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. times. Like, Anytime he was trying to did it all up in the videos dancing. Him, and, uh, him and Ross, like they, they kind of separated. I think Ross like kind of knew like, mm, it's, it's, done it, like that. yeah, it's not like, it's not going to be a lasting situation mm. because mm. like Ross, he's always kind of been like, he's the, the, we did the opposite with his artist. Also, we, yeah, we, exactly. we, we didn't opposite, we bro. didn't accept it. Cause remember, he did the um, what's the song? Nobody, um, what's it? Nobody knows you. you what's the, what's the record? He remixed the Biggie song. He was on a Biggie song. Angels. It was it. Is it Angels? It's on um, Last Train to Paris. Yeah, they, there was a couple big records he did. And people was, obviously with Ross's size, it's like, bro, you, you we can't. You're not resurrecting Biggie. Like, yeah. This doesn't nah, work. Angels with was Ross. There's another Ross song. Yeah, it's wavy still. Yeah, it's wavy still. Let me, let me type in. <laughs> I know. It's, I know you might even be angel. No, I think that was to. the last um, kind of project with Diddy that I kind of fucked with. Last train to Paris. Yeah, yeah. yeah that project Fuck was it. hard, Damn. bro. <laughs> For me, it was hard. But um, I think like the last time Diddy went platinum, like or one of his artists was when he was doing like the making a band um, with like what? Danny E. Kane and um, Day Twenty Six. Day Twenty Six around that period. Mm. So he hasn't like necessarily. I don't know what French has done um, in terms of like album sales. Oh shit, French was it like? Yeah. Is it artist or was he just managing them? What was it with them? Like? I think it's an artist situation, and then I think he went to like. Um, I think it was like a, a half deal with MMG because like okay. he was chilling with, he was around Ross a lot as well on on a self-made from, compilation. From outside looking in, I feel like with Ross, I feel like he's, I feel like um, Diddy micromanages and Ross doesn't. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like. He allows the artists to kind of express yeah, themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean? And Just then, from looking on how they operate. And but the, the difference is, is that Diddy was um, a, a producer. He's a mm. producer. So like back to the Mary J. Blige conversation, I just checked he's not, he wasn't, she wasn't under bad boy. 
she was with Uptown, but Diddy produced her albums. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Right, and cool, he was cool, doing cool. that with the hitmen, with Biggie and obviously like Stevie J being one of the producers and Mario Winans and yeah. a couple other men, like, mm. you know what I'm saying? So I think that's what, that what um, was the difference because like he was overseeing, everything had to be right. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a clip the other day, he was recording that tune with Keisha Cole last night and he was like applying mad pressure on her. Like, nah, do it again. You got you got to hit that note. Yeah, I heard he's not he's not easy in the studio, isn't it? No, I respect that. Yeah, you perfectionist. Nah, I, the song I, I, I was I talking about is no, it's called Nobody. It's the Biggie Smalls remix. That's the one song I was talking about. Okay. Add, in, add into Angels, mm. but it was that aesthetic. Mm. Big dude standing next to Diddy. Ah, uh, that was on um, uh, what's that Ross album? And French is on the hook. Yeah, yeah. So it was that. I mean, Mastermind, Mastermind. Mastermind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that it's before. not even to it's not even to like kind of cool. to like give Diddy a bligh, but I think H kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. It was kind of the industry way mm. because as much as we're saying about him, remember we all watched a new edition biopic they did whatever, yeah. yeah? They, 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 they they find that their contracts are fucked up. The streets say that Michael Bivins, after finding out everything was fucked up, what got done to him, he went he and did, did to boys to men. Mm. It's like man find out how to finesse the game mm. after being finessed themselves and go and do it back. Mm. And it ties into that black excellence conversation where it's like, we can't use the guys of black excellence where you're fucking over your fellow man. Just to show you like, mm. like when it comes to getting this money, like black, white, blue, whatever, anybody can fuck you over. Mm. Yeah, but the, the question sharks is, are out there. The question is, what would you do as the label exec in this situation? I would like to think I would do good business. What does good business look like? when everybody else is doing bad business. Mm. Because when you try and do good business and like your label's fucked over because like you're giving people as much of leverage as they want. Mm. But everyone forgets labels do take the risk in it because they put the money up. Yeah. So they, yeah, they, they, the, sorry, sorry to jump in, but then you're, that means you're, you're, you're not assessing your investment properly. Do you see what I'm saying? That's fair. If you're picking an investment that you can't trust to sustain itself outside of you micromanaging, then you're not, that's not a good investment fam. Mm. That means you're, you, you basically have another job. You can't be picking up an artist and then saying that they have their, they can do their thing, but then you have to also be the manager, then you have to also be the producer, then you, bro, you're not really exactly- Label situations always... were like a little bit different, like a lot of, you know. Yeah, 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 you've got a lot I'm of kids saying... from impoverished backgrounds who now get a lot of money, vices, you've got a lot more women they've not had before, access to drugs. Like, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that then goes into that where like, yeah, I may need some security because <laughs> niggas be nigging, bro. No, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm speak, only speaking from a perspective of now, like, yeah. Because then you're saying that you like said you'd like to think that. I'm talking was... from like a perspective of like that time period, innit? Okay. Of like, how do you do good business in an era when like everybody's doing bad? Mm. Like, and, it, and also it's not even bad, it's just the, the way. Yeah. So what, let's say we look at it now with Hans are saying it's bad, innit? Let's say for argument's sake, that time period, that was just the standard. You know, like, there's a standard contract, like, oh, no, everyone gets these. You're yeah. going to go down the road. Someone else is going to do the same thing. Like, remember when like um, the only time the era when like artists started getting a bit more on their side was like, after you've been big on a, on a major, you go to independence. So like, you hear stories of Jim Jones being on Koch mm. and balling was so big, they couldn't afford to pay him the money he was owed. They just had to make him executive. And there was him, a time period him a wage. there was bare like, man on Koch. A lot of man would yeah, go like, you got Empire, you've got, you've got, you've got different, yeah, you've got different <laughs> independent labels who will get premier artists from, that have been, have had like seven, eight albums. Mm. They're not as big as they were, but they're legacy act. Come and you can get a deal. So like, there was a time period where it would be like, Eight cents of a dollar is what you get. Mm. That's not good business, bro. Mm. But if the, if the album sells a million, mm. Mm. remember, like the mm. even like Birdman mm. and Wayne, like you thought that to this, this shit is like unlikely to this day, bro. Like Ross made a whole song about it, not like necessarily because he was upset about the little Wayne situation, but what hurt him the most was the Khalid situation. But what, what I will say again, you bringing it up, it just makes me. Once again, say that I feel like Russ is one of the few figures that are out, mm. like visible to the public eye, that really does his artists and people around him right. Yeah. In terms of dealing with them, mm. do you know what I mean? Because that's a proper fucked up situation. Like I said, but it does stem from mm. like twenty years back. But at the before, same time, before before the time of like when someone like a Russ came out, because mm. he I came out like. But the flip side is, remember Russ's age. Mm. Remember, Russi is a new 
he's quote unquote a more recent artist, but he's not far from these man's age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you understand. And so he was right. He he's been around for a long time. Yeah, you get me? yeah, he just busts later. Oh. So it's it's at the same time you could say that is it more the individual because is, is it like this or maybe like him being behind the scenes? He got to he got a different perspective. He was looking at it from the artist's side and thinking wait like something's not right but maybe at that time he just didn't have the leverage yeah to was say anything to do it, yeah. you know what i'm saying like where it will have impact but that's why know? i said at the time period when it come out it was convenient isn't it because mm. also to sell albums and like as big as ross is he's had albums which haven't done as well like numbers wise we mm. might like the music but like from a stats point of view mm. it did x amount twenty thousand first week yeah it yeah didn't do crazy numbers mm. You use a beef to kind of try and sell your, mm. your album. Mm. Good music on there, but mm. this is mm. called a spade a spade. Mm. You do that in it. So it's obviously you've known in it. So why didn't you say before? You say now, it also aids you. I'm not saying you can't benefit from the situation, mm. but there's also that to be said as well. But then you have to remember it helps this, your cause, innit? This whole this whole business is a is a chess game, innit? So if I have the right information, yeah. I'm not gonna say it just for the fact of being true, because being true doesn't matter, innit? In this but day and age, but don't being matter. true yeah. at the right time is completely different. Or he understand? may not have known like the business of Khalid until maybe he had a conversation years down the line and Khalid opened up and was like, rah, all those records that you man were on, like I'm on one and that. It was all under like YMC and B. Mm. Birdman's just there. Like. Birdman's <laughs> in the background, rubbing his hands in slow motion. Like, Ross there's is, something Ross... creepy about Birdman. If you don't even see him in an NBA young boy video, it's like, stay away from the YGs, bro. <laughs> like, leave them He's alone, in the back bro. just rubbing his hands. Like, he's just like, yeah, all this money's coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, do you, know, do you know what the mad thing is, yeah? Because, like, being in a position of an artist with like no piece or something, imagine yourself in that situation. And you know that this person's fucked up business wise. Some of the, some of your idols that you've looked at, he fucked but up you, Wayne. If Birdman can fuck over Wayne, he can fuck over but anybody. But you also know to yourself that this person's interested in you. Yeah. So it's like I can turn away Birdman, but this is the only, like he's still Birdman. Which is why not? It's will sign. So it's you just what it mean? is. It's just in business. It's very conflicting. Someone's gonna fuck you over. Just depends how good the sex is, mm. isn't it? So maybe what you do is you let Birdman fuck you over, but you don't do a five album deal. You do too. A lot of men have taken bad deals and don't mind it. It's just to get their foot in the door. Mm. But if you take a bad deal and you're now tied to this person yeah, contractually probably, probably for six is. albums, that's where the issue is. I'm not even mad that like, as long as you know what you're doing, obviously the Mace thing. And Drake as well. Yeah, Van Selvis, we're going to shoot a bit of empathy because of the age, how prestigious Bad Boy was at the time. You probably, like, everyone said, oh, get a lawyer, get a lawyer. There's a, that, that was the era where like, the label would give you the lawyer, the same lawyer the label was using. They're on the side of the label, and it's so mm. a lot of people got it's fucked like over. Just, it's, it's just like getting arrested, yeah, and then getting a civil lawyer. They'll just give you a civil lawyer mm. rather than actually getting the same, a lawyer. The same lawyer. legal aid, Donnie, that's been in there the whole day. That's been doing tea and coffee with PC this and PC that. <laughs> and then he come here to defend you. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah, I'll just, just say it was your gun. I just said, four years, come out in two. How about you go and do the sentence? <laughs> 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 about light bird. No, you go and do it, bro. But it's a light bird. No, nah, bro. It's, it's what's what's everyone's stance now on um, P Diddy? Well, I, well you look buying some rock still, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm buying that, fam. <laughs> are you like black yeah. excellence over there? Bro, are I you like... anti Diddy? The thing is, yeah, because I just heard this now and I, I didn't hear the mace thing before that, but yeah. bro, that's yeah. nothing I didn't think he was doing, yeah, did it? Yeah, like, 100%. like, you always hear all this stuff about man and understand that even sometimes if you just watch positioning of certain individuals who's around them, how long they're around them for, and who's around them now, you can kind of gauge that something has gone right. It's not, you know, like that person that's like, oh, everyone snakes me. Mm. But they've been in so many crews, you're thinking, are you sure that every crew is snaking you or is it you, my G? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Join like, the guns. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe everyone's snake. Like, you got to look at things sometimes, isn't it? And say, yeah. like, think for yourself and go... Hold the mirror up a little bit. Yeah, and say, look, hold on. I don't... The pattern... Let me understand it. And then if you get more understanding on, say, like, let's say, whatever the situation is, like, I have a certain understanding of music and how these things would work. I'm like, mm. yeah, I can imagine he's fucking people over, but he's doing it legally. And yeah. in the end of the day, he's probably saying, business is business. Yeah, he signed it. It's your mm. fault. You know, give, like, you're give me liable. what the white man offered and you can get it back. You see what mm. I'm saying? Like, because you know? he's probably going to be like, bro, it would be bad business for me to sell that for you. It for, would be. For it, two it probably, million. It probably would be. Because if, if Donnie's saying no, he's clearly, he's been offered a certain bro, lot higher. I, gar I, I can guarantee. Oh, I can, uh, you can guarantee that uh, Mace is publishing is way higher than two million. Like, come, come on, on bruv. Okay, just put it. I'll, I'll no, say that. Is, to put it into context, yeah. 
I saw something, and I do trust the source. I hope it's correct that Little Kim gets about a million a year for um, the hardcore. hardcore. So just put in perspective, just to kind of you can kind yeah, of gauge yeah. possibly where what Mace's publishing would be. Okay. Or value. Oh, so like, it was a one. Joe Biden was on own, a... That's like how you. That's how you eat. You, that you don't have to go on tour. Joe you think Biden you, was oh, saying, "Want to go on tour? Yeah, bro, want to tour, bro. Bro. Joe Biden was saying that he still gets like what twenty five bags a year, like till this day, for pump it up. That's one single. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Just like that's that tells you enough that mm, someone like Mace true. that had like bro, this smashed thing is money, bro. I won't even say mm. that. Right, someone got signed. Their single got signed recently, four hundred bags. Like I, I can't do that now, bro. My, my political connects. <laughs> 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 Sign language. Tell me. <laughs> Sign language. <laughs> four hundred bags, isn't it? Light work. Light work. <laughs>